sorry that it's been a little while. I am uh, I'm glad to be back in in the motion of getting some teaching to you guys. I genuinely love all of you, and I look forward to the day when I'm able to come and be with you and and share what God has put in my heart for you. Today I was praying this morning and I was asking the Lord what He had. And as I was praying, I was reminded of the story of the prodigal son. And it made me think, there's so many different symbolisms in that story that are so beautiful. But the one that I really wanted to point out was the heart of the father. Well, two things. There's two things I want to The heart of the father and also the brother. So... A quick recap of that story that you can find in the Gospels, the story of the prodigal son. The son has an inheritance from his father. He takes it and he spends all of it, wastes it all on nonsense, worldly things, a lifestyle of just satisfying his own flesh. And he ends up spending everything, going broke. Now he's poor and he's sleeping with the pigs. And then he has this revelation. He says, even if I could just be a servant in my in my father's house, at least I would eat better and be better than where I am right now. So he said, even if I could just be a servant in my father's house, I would be able to have something. So he was going home, going back home with the expectation that his father was embarrassed of him, ashamed of him, upset with him, wanting nothing to do with him. So he was going there hoping to be able to get back into the house as a servant just so he could live a better life than where he was. But as he goes down the road, it says that the father was sitting on the front porch waiting for him to come. He was anticipating the return of his son. He was anticipating his son coming back home. And he was waiting patiently. And the moment that he saw his son... It said he ran off the porch to meet him. He ran off the porch to meet him with open arms. And then he said, give him my ring. Give him my robe. Give him, get the fattest calf that we have. We're going to have a celebration and a feast in honor of my son coming home. So his son went there with the expectation of being a servant. But the father received him as his son. Because his sonship never changed. See, regardless of what he did and how he squandered away all of his inheritance, the father still loved him as a son. And the moment that he made a decision to come back to the father, he received him with open arms. See, in scripture, in James, it says this, in James 4, it says that if you draw near to God, then he will draw near to you. So if you draw near to God, the moment that you turn your affection and your attention towards God, it says that he will draw near to you. He turns to you. This is so beautiful. You have to understand this. I believe this is a word for people listening right now. That maybe you thought that you've gone too far away from God. Maybe you felt like with the things that you've gotten into, whether it be witchcraft and different things, the things that you've allowed into your life, the things that you've allowed to consume you. Maybe you feel like you're not worthy. And if you could just find a way to get away from all of this brokenness. Let me tell you something. The Father in heaven sees you as his child and he loves you. And he paid the highest price by sending his son Jesus to die for you. He displayed his love to you through the finished work of the cross of Calvary. 2,000 years ago, Jesus hung on the cross and he paid the price. So you don't have to go to a sinner's hell. It's not meant for you. He has a plan and a purpose. And that plan was fulfilled when Jesus died on the cross and was resurrected from the grave. And the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and believe it in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and has risen from the grave for you, then you shall be saved. So don't think just because you wandered away and you you walked away from God that he doesn't have a plan and a purpose for you. 
And then real quickly on the other side of that, the son, the brother. The moment that the other brother came back and his father embraced him and said, let's have a celebration. The other brother became jealous. He's thinking to himself, what about me? What about, you're, you're throwing this elaborate party for him. He, he wasted all of his inheritance and you treat him the same when he comes back like nothing changed? Why? See, but what that brother didn't realize is that he already had everything he needed. He was so focused on what somebody else had that he didn't see what he already had. His father loved him the same and had everything the same for him. He lived in the house. He could have a calf whenever he wanted to. He was a blessed man. But because he was so focused on being jealous of what someone else had, he didn't realize. And see, that's what the devil likes to do. The devil likes to get us distracted comparing ourselves to others and looking at other people and what they have and thinking, man, I wish I had that. You already have everything you need in Jesus. He is the all-sufficient one. Everything that you need is found in Jesus. He is everything you need. You need nothing else. The moment you give your life to him, you have access to everything that you need. The father said he'll never leave you, nor will he ever forsake you. He said he'll provide for all of your needs according to his riches and glory that are found in Christ Jesus. He said, if you abide in me and I abide in you, I will come. I will make my home in you. Jesus wants to make his home in you today. So for anyone who feels like maybe you're that prodigal son or daughter that's gone away, I'm telling you now, you have an opportunity to come back to God. He's calling you home. He's saying, son, daughter, come back to me. And I want to give you that opportunity. And maybe you're the son who lived in the house and has everything, but maybe you've been blindsided and comparing yourself to others and wishing that you had what other people have. But let me tell you something. Everything you need is in Jesus. Trust him. Give him your heart. Surrender today and allow him to come and change the brokenness and take out the heart of stone and put in a heart of flesh. I want to pray with you. I want to give you an opportunity. If that's you, if you fit into either one of those, that you are the, the prodigal son or daughter who left, who went away from God, but now he's calling you home and you feel him tugging on your heart right now, then I want you to say this prayer with me. And if you're that son who's been caught up with consuming and being compared to other people and trying to wish that you had and envying what other people have, right now you can surrender that, lay that envy down and say, Lord, I just want you and nothing else. Nothing else matters. If, if that's you in either one of those categories, I want you to say this prayer with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me, cleanse me. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. That he died on the cross and that he rose from the grave for me. And that he's coming back again. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I lay down all pride, all envy. Anything that's not of you, I lay it down now. Come into my heart. Set me free today. I am free. I am saved. I am born again because I have Jesus in my heart. Now, if you said that prayer right now, please call in whatever you need to do so we can get you information. We want to get this in your hands so we can follow up with you and stay connected. We want to get you plugged into a local church. We love you. We love you. God bless you. We will be in touch. Have a wonderful day.